Junior Roberts here with realjuniorroberts.com. This is question one of the CSEC Physics January 2022 past paper. We're going to be working question one in this video and in future videos we're going to be working the remaining questions in the paper. So let's see what it says right here. So it says figure one shows the arrangement of the apparatus used to investigate used to investigate how the pressure of a fixed mass of gas varies with the temperature of the gas. So we're dealing with how the pressure right, of a fixed mass of gas uh, varies with temperature. right? So now, we can see right away that this question is related to the gas laws, right? Because once we see something about a fixed mass of gas, we should right away think about gas laws. So now, Let's see what it says now. So it says that the cylinder is made of a very strong material which, it, which allows it to withstand high pressures and it is sealed so that there are no leaks. A temperature sensor is placed inside the cylinder to give an accurate record of the temperature of the gas over a wide range of temperatures. A pressure gauge is also placed in the cylinder to record the pressure readings. And this is our apparatus as we see here. So we have the container which is sealed Right? We have a pressure gauge and we have a temperature sensor and we have a fixed mass of gas that is trapped inside this container and it is actually heated. Right? Or it is actually being heated. So now let's see what they want us to say now. So they're saying now that the first thing that they want us to do is use the kinetic theory of gases to explain why the pressure of the gas increases as the temperature rises. So what we can say now is that as well, first of all, we know that the kinetic theory says that matter is comprised of tiny particles which are in constant motion. So what we're going to see now is that as the temperature of the gas increases, of the gas increases, this causes an increase in the average kinetic energy of the molecules of the gas. All right, and we can remember that temperature is merely a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules of a substance. As the temperature increases, that's going to cause an increase in the average kinetic energy. Now we know that kinetic energy Ke is equal to one half mv squared. So if the kinetic energy increases, what we're going to realize is that the velocity of the object must increase. So in case of the gas now, because the kinetic energy has increased, it simply means that the velocity of the gas molecules would have also increased. Right? So as a result of that increase in the velocity due to an increase in the average kinetic energy, we're going to see that the gas molecules, gas molecules, therefore, collide with each other, but most importantly with the walls of its walls of the container. container more often and also harder, right? Which increases the force per unit area. Now we know that force per unit area is pressure. Right, because pressure is equal to the force per unit area. So what we're going to say now is that as a result of the increase in force per unit area, then the pressure of the gas is, is increased. Right? So that's how we could explain why the pressure increases. Now let's see what's next. Table 1 shows the results obtained when the experiment was carried out to investigate the variation of pressure, P in Pascals, with temperature in degrees Celsius when the gas was heated. Right? Now, in this case now, 
It says we're to use the results from table one to plot a graph of pressure against temperature, right? Now, in this case, what we're gonna consider is we're going to um, plot our graph, right? So that we can actually take into consideration what they require us to do at part two. So now, when we're drawing up our axes, we're gonna draw our axes in such a way that we can actually have both positive and negative values for temperature. So let's go to the graph paper and actually look at that right now. Okay, so I've ruled up my graph paper, right? So notice on my x-axis, I have both negative and positive values. And the scale on the x-axis is two centimeters equal to 100 degrees Celsius. And we have the temperature measured in degrees Celsius. Now for the y-axis, we're using two centimeters equal to 0 0.2 times 10 to the five Pascals. And we have pressure measured in Pascals. Now here we have our um, values for the y-axis. And what we're saying is that all the values on the y-axis are, are being multiplied by times 10 to the 5. So this is actually 2.2 times 10 to the 5, 2.0 times 10 to the 5, so on and so forth. So now, we can start to plot our points. So the first one is 25 to 1.2. So we have the pressure being 1.2 times 10 to the 5, and that goes to 25. So this is 100, this is 50. So 25 must be in the middle here, so we're going to put our x right there. Right, continuing, we have 50 to 1.3. So this is 50 right here, 1.3 must be here. Right, next one, we have 75 to 1.4. So this is 50 right here, 100 to 75 must be in between to 1.4, so it's gonna be here. Right, continuing, we have 100 to 1.5. So that's 100 to 1.5, 1.5 is here, so let's go like that. All right, next one, we have 125 to 1 1.6. So 125 to 1.6 is right here. And then now, we have 150 to 1.7. So let's find 150. So 150 would be in the middle right there to 1.7. So 1.7 has to be here, right? So now that we have plotted our points, we can now draw our best fit line. So let's do that just now. So we're gonna draw our best fit line. So we're gonna take our ruler and draw in the best fit line. I'm gonna just allow it to touch the Y axis. So let's say this is our best fit line, line of best fit. Let me just get it as nice as possible. So this would be our best fit line. All right, like about this. So this would be our best fit line like this. So let's draw this in, All right, as the best fit line, okay? Now, let's put in our title. So for the title, now we can say graph showing. pressure against temperature. So we have pressure against temperature, right? And we can just underline, we can just underline, let me just get this properly, we can just underline like so. Right, we're gonna underline like that. All right, so now let's continue. So now it says we're to extrapolate the line to meet the temperature axis and mark this point X on your graph. And we're to state the temperature value at which, and we're to state the temperature value at this point and the name given to this temperature. So what they want us to do is they want us to take our ruler and just extend this line so that it meets the temperature axis so let's get the ruler again and place it up like this. And we're going to just extend our line, right? Extend the line so that it meets the temperature axis just like that. And they say we need to mark an X. So let's put a big X right here. So we're gonna mark an X, right? At the point, let us say X let's say x like 
that. Right, so we'll put an X at the point, and let's say we need to read the temperature value. So looking back, we see that the temperature value, this is minus 200, minus 250, minus 260, minus 270, minus 280. So the temperature value is minus 280 degrees Celsius, right? Now, ideally, we expect to get something uh, in the range of 273, right, for this value. Now, this value, because what we see is that the volume, this is the temperature of the gas when its volume is zero, right? And we see now that this temperature actually relates to what we call absolute zero, which is the lowest possible temperature. So what we're going to see now is that this temperature is absolute zero. Right, this is absolute zero, which corresponds to zero Kelvin. Right, so this value corresponds to zero Kelvin. So let's, so zero Kelvin. Right, so let's continue. So now it says now we to use the graph to determine the gradient of the line. So to find the gradient, we know that the gradient, let us say the gradient M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So now we need to find values for y2, y1, x2, and x1. So let's do that. So taking our ruler, we're going to select two random points that are far apart. So let me see. I choose this one right here. So that's my first point, and I'm going to choose my second point. Let's see if I can go with one. Let's say this one here. So these are my two points. I need to read off values for x2 and y, sorry, x2 and x1. So let's go like this. And also like this. So what I'm going to see now is that this, is, this will give me my x2 value. This will give me y2. This will give me x1. And this will give me y1. So now, x2 is 2.0, y1 is 0.5. So let's say this is equal now to 2.0. Let's say um, minus 0 0.5. And this is times 10 to the 5 pascals. And we're dividing that now by x2 minus x1. So x2 is 210. 220, 230, and this is minus 150. So we're going to have 230 degrees Celsius minus minus 150 degrees Celsius because our temperature for or the value for X1 was minus 150. So we have to minus minus 150. So now, so we have to subtract negative 150 essentially. So this now works out to be this is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 5 pascals. And we're dividing this now. This is 230 minus minus 150. So this becomes a plus. So we have 230 plus 150. That's 380 degrees Celsius. So now, taking the calculator, we can say 1.5 x pressed to the 5 divided by 380, and this works out to 394.74. So we could say this is 394.74. And the temperature would be pascals per degree Celsius. All right, that's going to be our unit. So now, let's continue. So further down, it says now that the sentence below is an incomplete statement of the pressure law. Complete the statement by filling in the blank spaces. So what we're going to say is that for a fixed mass of gas, once we're dealing with the pressure, law, once we're dealing with any gas law, we're always considering a fixed mass of gas. Since this is the pressure law, we're going to say for a fixed mass of gas at a constant volume, right? The pressure. pressure of the gas, 
right? So the pressure of the gas is directly proportional to the absolute, right? Or we could say the Kelvin temperature, which is simply the temperature of the gas in Kelvin, right? So that's our statement completed. Next thing now, it says now that in an experiment, now it says in the experiment on page six, the pressure of the gas is 1.2 times 10 to the five pascals at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. When the cylinder is heated, the pressure reaches 2.1 times 10 to the five pascals, and they want us to calculate the temperature of the gas in degrees Celsius at this pressure. So now, since we're dealing with a, um, a fixed mass of gas at a constant volume, we can consider that P1 over T1 will be equal to P2 over T2. Now what we're gonna see now is that P1 is 1.2 times 10 to the five pascals. Uh, T1 is 25 degrees Celsius. But once we're dealing with gas laws, we have to express our temperatures in Kelvin. So this will be, we're gonna add 273 to this. So let's say 25 plus 273. When we add 273 to this, we're going to get 298 Kelvin. <coughs> right, and P2 <coughs> is our unknown. Well, sorry, P2 was given. So P2 is given as 2.1 times 10 to the five pascals, but T2 is what we're trying to find. So now, let's make T2 the subject. So to make T2 the subject, we can cross multiply, right? So after cross multiplying, we're gonna get T2 times P1 is equal to P2 times T1. <coughs> so now, what to do from here? You know, we divide here by P1, divide here by P1. So we see that T2 is equal to P2 times T1 over P1. So now from here, it's just a matter of substituting. So we're gonna say now, this will be equal to P2 is this right here, so we say two, 0.1 times 10 to the 5 pascals multiplied by T1, which is 298. So 298 Kelvin. And we divide that now by P1, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 5 pascals. So now, taking the calculator, we're going to see that this will be equal to. So taking the calculator, let's multiply straight through. So we say 2.1 expressed to the five, multiplied by 298, that is equal to that, then we're gonna divide by 1.2, expressed to the five, and that works out to 521.5 Kelvin, right? However, the question asks for the temperature in degree Celsius. So we'll have to convert the temperature to degree Celsius, so we're gonna see now that T2 in degree Celsius will simply be equal to 521.5 minus 273. So in doing so, we get 248.5 degrees Celsius. And that would be our answer. Okay, so this would be question one completed. So again, if there are any questions, you could post them below in comments, right? And I will do my best to answer any questions you have and help to clear up any misconceptions. Thank you for watching.